The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In other words, the Gospel may since be blotted out. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. From the pen of St. Mark, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, at the beginning of his ministry, the divinity of Jesus is manifested to us again in the way that he speaks with authority, and in the way that he exercises that authority over the powers of darkness. First, Jesus taught with authority, and not like the scribes. Well, how did the scribes teach? As their name implies, they were charged to make copies of the Torah. And that meant they became scholars and experts in what they said. So if you wanted to know what the Torah had to say about something, and that's a pretty big book, well, the scribe would be the expert to ask. He was the one who was charged with writing it down, again and again and again. And it was totally improper for a scribe to teach on his own authority. Surely he had his own opinions, but that was not his role and his function. Instead, they would say, it is written in the law of Moses, or it is written in the Torah, that such and such. And then they would expand on that by noting what other scriptures and prophets had to say about the same subject, as well as what great rabbis had taught about this passage. But Jesus spoke differently. As the living Word of God, he spoke on his own authority. He was just as authoritative as the written Word. Whenever he did quote the Bible, you notice it was to strengthen the original meaning. Jesus did this several times, for example, in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. That's in the Torah. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. What Jesus has to say, in other words, is more important than anything you have ever heard before. And so they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes, which is to say that Jesus exercised his own divine authority. Well, one voice in the synagogue that day was less amazed than revolted. It was a man possessed by a demon who spoke through the man, crying out in torment, Why have you come, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Immediately Jesus commanded the demon to be silent and to leave him. And it just happened like that as suddenly as he said it. Mark tells us they were all amazed. With the authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. There was no struggle. It was just he commanded, and it happened. Jesus silenced the demon because he did not wish 
that the truth should come from the same source from whence blasphemy and deception routinely flow. His authority over demons is stronger than the testimony of their words. The directions concerning exorcism from the Book of Occasional Services note, the practice of expelling evil spirits by means of prayer and set formulas derives its authority from the Lord himself, who identified these acts as signs of his messiahship. Only the Messiah has the right, the authority, to command the unclean spirits, and they will only be forced to obey when commanded by his divine authority. Thankfully, he entrusted that authority to his church to continue that ministry of healing so that we could continue his work when he returned to the Father. You may recall, of course, that scene at the end of his earthly ministry, just before he gave the great commission and ascended into heaven. Matthew tells us that Jesus came to the disciples and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. But he didn't leave us helpless. He didn't leave us without a share in that power and authority because he charged us to act in his name. And so he gave us the authority to act in his name, to go out into all the world and extend his invitation to come, follow me. He left his authority to his apostles to act in his name, in absolving sins, in the acts of binding and loosing, and in celebrating the Eucharist in remembrance of him. And Jesus gave us the power to accomplish this work through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Power and authority are two slightly different things. Power is the ability to get something done while authority is the right to do something. Jesus has both, and he shares both with us, with his church. If you're still a little fuzzy on the details, picture a wedding reception. Say I have a kitchen and all the right ingredients to make that big wedding cake. And so I bake a large cake and I bring it to the reception and I put it on the table. Well, I have the power to bake a cake but not necessarily the right to bake the wedding cake. I don't have that right because the bride didn't choose me to do that. I'm not the baker that she hired for this and gave that authority to. But suppose I am the baker that she hired. And suppose I have no kitchen and I have no ingredients. Then I would have all the authority I need, but I wouldn't have the power. When Jesus teaches and when he silences the demon in today's gospel, his power is demonstrated by exercising his authority, and his authority is manifested by the display of his power. Jesus has given us a gift of power and a gift of authority. He wants us to respect that power and authority ourselves by following our apostolic leaders in the church when they also teach with the authority of Christ, by coming to receive their ministrations. You know, you don't see too many bumper stickers these days. That's kind of faded out. But one of the still that are few circulating out there is one that says, question authority. Some claim the sentiment goes back to Socrates, which probably does. Most point to the controversial psychologist Timothy Leary, who popularized the sentiment in the counterculture movement coming out of the 60s in the Vietnam War. Question authority. It certainly taps into that American independent spirit. We like being our own boss, and we don't like others telling us what to do, even if it's telling us a good thing to do. Moreover, the slogan question authority also taps into our sinful, rebellious human nature. Psalm 36 perhaps captures it best. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. We may still cringe a little bit when we hear the words of Jesus say, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, to follow Jesus 
though means to call him Lord, to submit to his reign and to his authority. It is to acknowledge his right to command and submit to his rule. And to understand the written word, the Bible, is to stand under its authority. If we are to have a future in Christ, we must first repent of that rebellious spirit and come under his authority and receive his grace of forgiveness and mercy. In return, Christ welcomes us into the family of God, and we are part of his royal family, which means that we have a share and a role to play in his ministry. He did not leave us without a share in that power and authority we see in the gospel. He gave us the authority to act in his name, to go out into the world and extend his invitation to others. Come, follow me. And Jesus wants all of us who are called by his name to put to use that power and authority he entrusted to his church. Like the early church in the book of Acts, we are to stay in Jerusalem no longer. The Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us, empowering us to be his witnesses at Jerusalem, at home, in Judea and Samaria, a little further outside of our comfort zone, and finally to all the ends of the earth. And we too might be astonished when we put to good use the power and authority Christ entrusted to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.